Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to summarize some of the points from the last lecture. We went through an experiment to show how T cell activation occurs briefly and how T cells can get activated by the secretion of IL 2 and how to measure the T cell that was activated by virtue of the proliferation that ensues later on by the use of radioactive thymidine that is incorporated into the DNA of the proliferating cells. We also went through an experiment to show the role of macrophages and how they were taking up the soluble antigen and by virtue of taking it up into the cell, this soluble antigen became resistant to trypsin treatment and how this antigen was processed within the cell and after a period after various periods of incubation they could stimulate T cells that had been activated to that particular antigen. We also went through some of the immunological disorders especially the immunodeficiencies that were related to the different hematopoietic lineages. We also left the last lecture by looking into some aspects of lymphoid circulation. This lymphoid circulation relates to the different organs of the immune system and that is what is going to be covered in this lecture. So, as we went into this in the last lecture, the organs of the immune system have the thymus and the bone marrow as primary lymphoid organs and the various lymph nodes and the lymph nodes that was associated with the mucosal surf surfaces like the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue and the gut associated lymphoid tissue that made up the secondary lymphoid organs. We also went through some of the aspects of how these different lymph nodes were distributed in various parts of the body, so that the immune reactions that could be started against antigens that enter the body at various locations could be facilitated. Now, in this lecture we are going to look at some of the organs of this immune system, especially the lymphoid organs, namely the lymph node with more emphasis to the Peyer's patches that are associated with the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue or MALT for short M A L T. We look briefly at the organization or the roles of the spleen, and then see how all these lymphocytes enter the lymph node and exit the lymph node. And towards this purpose we had introduced this slide which looked at the systemic circulation of how the blood is circulated from the heart to various parts of the body especially this iota getting smaller and smaller in size at the extremities of the body to small little capillaries which is where the exchange of oxygen occurs to the tissue cells that need that oxygen and the waste matter and the deoxygenated blood starts to get collected in these capillaries and then slowly collect and get pumped back into the heart for reoxygenation. We also mentioned that the various tissue spaces and the tissue cells that were located in various parts of the body have some fluid that drain them and all this fluid collect together and it is also this fluid is also referred to as the interstitial fluid.
this interstitial fluid is what collects in these tissue spaces and they all get collected and drained into the thoracic duct and this fluid that is accumulated is also called as the lymph. And these are the fluid or the interstitial fluid that is draining from various parts of the body, various tissue spaces, especially where inflammation is occurring and other parts of the skin and so on and so forth, contain not only the antigens that infect at that site, if it is a virus infection or a bacterial infection of the skin or be it a virus that affects the heart tissue or other organs. This viral virus antigen is what is collected in these uh, interstitial fluid that is draining these spaces. Not only that various cells that are migrating from different parts of the body especially lymphoid cells also drain into the thoracic duct. One of the important parts of this uh, lymphoid or uh, lymph circulation is that all this circulation is not really actively pumped like the um, like the uh, like what happens with the heart. It is basically the muscles that line these various uh, secondary or participate in the, par in the formation of the secondary lymphoid organs as well as some of the muscle underlying uh, the, the location where the thoracic duct is located. They are the one the muscular movements actually help propel the lymphoid or the lymph uh, fluid uh, towards the heart and this is facilitated by also something called as uh, unidirectional valves. For example, if it is going towards the duct you have some sort of a valve over here which is probably something like this and then that goes into the heart. So, if the, if the thoracic duct is pushed by muscular movements across this valve, this is a one way valve. So, this this sort of flow is prevented. In fact, this sort of unidirectional flow is also what occurs while the lymph, lymph fluid is draining into the lymph nodes as we saw as we look at some of the figures that I showed you in the last, uh, in the last lecture. And we go into this where we look at the structure of a lymph node. Now, if you look at this uh, structure you find that the lymph node is having an outer covering or a capsule. So, this part of it is called as the capsule which is kind of little more relatively more tougher than the interior of this lymph node and beneath the capsule you find the various cells organized into uh, different uh, nodules or different collections of cells. So, what you see here is beneath, beneath the cortex you have an area where you have a congregation of cells over here which is located over here where the arrow is which is called as a primary follicle. This primary follicle contains a collection of cells mature B cells which are ready to interact with the oncoming antigen which is actually draining in through the afferent lymphatics over here through these arrows. Again you must realize that this direction of movement of the antigen and the lymph is towards the inside of the lymph node because you have these valves that are coming in that are positioned over there and therefore, the muscular movements actually facilitate the movement of the lymph that contains the antigen as well as cells such as lymphocytes different kinds of lymphocytes through this valve and this movement is prevented by this valve. So, therefore, you find that all the fluid containing the antigen and some cells with it comes into the lymph node and the first congregation of cells that they interact is with these follicular cells. These primary follicles as I told you earlier consists of collection of mature B cells. Not only mature B cells, they also have some antigen presenting cells, follicular dendritic cells in other words as well as some helper T cells. 
So, the antigen that comes in in this location is encountered not only by the B cells, they are also encountered by these follicular dendritic cells which take up the antigen and process this antigen and present them to T cells as we saw in the earlier lectures. Now, this process actually results in the activation of the T cells, which then results in the secretion of lymphokines that help the B cells to proliferate such as I L 4 and so on. So, this proliferation of B cells actually results in the formation of what is the secondary lymphoid follicle. Basically, the secondary lymphoid follicle consists of a central core of these germinal cells, which because of their division they push the dividing cells to the periphery and therefore, form a kind of a mantle around these germinal center cells which are getting activated. During, during all this process that is happening, you find under this layer or the interior of this layer, you have an area called as the paracortex. This red striped area is called as the paracortex or it is also called as the T dependent area or the T cell area, because it consists mainly of T helper cells. So, all these cells in one way or another migrate, some of them migrate to these follicles but majority of these T cells are found here and many of them include cells that are getting activated as these antigen filters through the lymph node from the follicular or the outside uh, area into the paracortical area. From the paracortex, the antigens and some of the, of the cells that are activated especially the B cells which have got activated and differentiated into plasma cells accumulate in this region. This is a region which I have marked by these red, uh, red uh, kind of stripes which we will look, look into in the next slide. So, this contains an aggregation or an association of plasma cells. So, what does this medulla contain? It contains a collection of sinuses. Sinuses are basically spaces or medullary, they are also called as medullary cords and medullary sinuses, along which all these plasma cells and T helper cells, which are helping these B cells migrate and start to accumulate. In addition to this, of course, you have at, at this side of the lymph node, you have what is called as an efferent lymphatic as opposed to the afferent lymphatic, where the antigen is draining into the lymph node along with some lymphocytes. On the other hand, the efferent lymphatic is where all these antibodies that are secreted in this region exit the lymph node along with certain lymph nodes that come in the, along with certain lymphocytes that enter the lymph node via what are called as post capillary endothelial venules which you will see in the next slide. In addition to this of course, you have the blood circulation to the lymph node via what is called as an arteriole or a venule. So, looking at the medulla per se, you see that the medulla is organized into medullary cords that you see over here. And you have medullary sinuses. So, these medullary sinuses and medullary cords are lined by these plasma cells or B cells which are secreting the antibody. So, the antibody that is secreted actually finds its way into this medulla or medullary sinus, after which it finds its way out of the lymph node through the efferent lymphatics. So, you see that the if you look at the overall structure of the lymph node, you see how the antigen is entering the lymph node via the afferent lymphatics as shown over here by these arrows. As soon as they enter the lymph node, they are 
met by these the cells that are making up these follicles as I have shown you here. In the last transparency, these were the primary follicles consisting of an association of mostly mature B cells which are ready to get activated by the antigen. Along with that of course, there are some antigen presenting cells like follicular dendritic cells as well as some T helper cells. There are other cells called as the as the interdigitating cells which actually have long cytoplasmic processes which bridge the outside where the primary follicles are located to the paracortex. So, therefore, this, this uh, interdigitating cells help in activating T cells that are located in the paracortex. So, looking at this you have these are the secondary lymphoid uh, follicles and you have other structures called as high endothelial venules or HEV for short. Now, the high endothelial venules play a very important role in what is termed as trafficking of lymphoid cells. Trafficking means as the word implies the movement of cells from one location to another especially lymphoid cells. So, these lymphoid cells have to move from one location for example, if they are found in the blood they have to come out into the lymph node which is where they have to activate the B cells. And if there are circulating B cells, those B cells also have to come into the lymph node and the way they come in is via these high endothelial venules or HEVs for short. Now, to understand how these HEV are associated with lymphoid trafficking, let us go to the next slide, where we look at some simple diagrams that make clear what happens to some something like a tissue where, where you have an artery and the artery of course, is made up of different layers and so you have this lumen and on the outside you have the connective tissue and in between you have these various layers especially the smooth muscle which is called by different names and the different layers are called or named differently in this in this uh, artery cross section of the artery which we will not we need not go into in this slide. Suffice it to say that this endothelial layer is what lines this lumen and it is this lumen through which the blood is flowing and the blood contains as all of you know con consists of lymphocytes whether it is B lymphocyte or T lymphocytes or for that matter dendritic cells or antigen presenting cells in addition to various other kinds of hematopoietic cells. Now, as, as you can guess by now that the thickness of this artery makes it very, very difficult for cells to move out from the lumen into the outside of the artery. But yet as I told you in the last figure these cells find their way specifically into the lymph node. Now, to imagine that you need to go back and see that if you were to look at the lymph the lymphoid circulation it was designated or you, you, you saw these lymph nodes where the thoracic duct as well as these uh, different um, systemic circulation and the arterioles they become thinner and thinner in size and therefore, the, the layers of the tissue that make up the arteries or the blood vessels become thinner and thinner and finally, within the lymph node as these small little capillaries are going through they actually become only a single or two cell thick two, two cell layers. Now, these endothelial layer as you can see have got certain small pores. So, these are the spaces of the pores through which the lymphocyte actually come out of the blood vessel or the capillary into the lymph node. So, again when you see here you find that the lumen is inside the HEV and this HEV is actually the capillary the capillary vessel that is coming in from the arteries or the arteriole that you saw in the previous transparency and the venule that finally, go in like that 
and this is the vinyl and then they they come out and then exit as a vinyl. So, the artery taking in the blood and then coming out through the vinyl. So, this is just a cross section of this particular excuse me that particular blood vessel. So, the cells are circulating within that arteriole and then they come within this lumen and they get out from using those pores that you saw in the endothelial cells. Now, to understand this a little further we have to go back to the to the slide that I showed you in, in the first few uh, first class where I showed you this is the capillary venule that is transporting all the red blood cells and the various kinds of lymphocytes and I told you that these cells have the ability to sense the antigen or the bacterial infection that is occurring in the tissues why are the various factors that are released from bacteria for example, the chemotactic factors that are released from bacterial cell walls. So, these cells that are circulating in the blood capillary have to identify this stimulus which by the way is like going in a dark tunnel, but yet they recognize the presence of the bacterial infection and they come out through the single layer of high endothelial venule cells or endothelial cells. This whole process of migration of these cells during the circulation and then out across the endothelial barrier into the site of infection consists of different steps. To imagine this whole process you have to imagine something of an example that I will try and give you something similar to uh, the game of cricket where the cricket ball is thrown in the cricket ground. When somebody hits this cricket ball with a bat the ball can roll on the ground when it rolls on the ground if the ground is dry the cricket ball rolls faster and reaches the boundary. On the other hand if there was rain and there was soggy mud around the cricket ball finds it harder to reach the boundary because of the the slowing down of the cricket ball because it is interacting with the wet mud and the water that is associated with this wet mud. Now, if you look at these cells it is something like a ball that is rolling within the fluid that is going in in the blood vessel. So, they are actually flowing in this blood in this blood and they are rolling. So, if you look at various textbook you will see that one of them is called that these cells are rolling they are tumbling in this in this blood and then in order to come out from here there are several steps that occur. So, after rolling they undergo what is called as sticking or activation. So, they are also this is called as tethering they are interacting with certain components in the blood vessel wall and then of course, you have the adhesion. And then after adhesion you have the movement of the cells across this endothelial cell which is also called as extravasation or it is also called as trans endothelial migration after which they migrate towards the bacteria. So, there are again there are four steps to this process of cells finding their way from inside the blood vessel towards the site or, or the or the locus where there is infection. First they are rolling in the blood something during this rolling where there is bacterial infection tells them to start adhering to the cell wall during which process they are also getting activated. So, during this activation actually what happens is certain molecules that are present on the cell surface of these cells and the molecules that are present on these vascular endothelial cells of the high endothelial venule start to interact with each other. This interaction of these proteins that are present on the cell that is rolling or tethering 
with the cells or with the molecules that are expressed on the cell surface of these blood vessel endothelial cells causes an activation of these cells. These cells get activated when they get activated certain lymphokines are secreted they not only they, they not only are cytokines uh, liberated or secreted there are also an increase in the surface expression of many other adhesion molecules. This adhesion molecules when expressed on the cell surface causes the stopping or stopping of the cell at that location. So, they are no longer rolling on, on, the, on the blood vessel wall, but they are now stopping there at that point and during this process a variety of signaling processes are taking place in the cell that is adhering to the endothelial wall. Now, as these things are occurring, as these stimulation processes and the and the transmembrane signaling processes are activating this cell that has adhered to the vascular endothelial cell causes the extra vasation through the pores that are present between two endothelial cells. And therefore, when you look at all these different kinds of lymph nodes, you find that the cells are constantly moving from the heart via the circulation through the lymph nodes various secondary lymphoid organs and these lymphocytes actually exit exactly where the lymph, lymph nodes are located through the high endothelial cell venules. So, in order to understand this better it has been found that many of these cells actually have specific this is essentially protein protein interaction that is facilitating facilitating this process of extravasation into uh, the lymph node or for that matter into a site of inflammation. So, this protein protein interaction includes ligand receptor interaction which actually causes downstream mem transmembrane signaling which then results in various kinds of actions like for example, the secretion of lymphokines which then further the whole process. Now, to understand this better various experiments were done to show that in fact, you could have lymphocytes that are actually homing into certain kinds of lymph node. I showed you in, in one slide where there were so many lymph nodes that were distributed in the, uh, in the body of the mouse. So, what what was being done at that, that time is that even in these animals various tumors arise and these tumors actually belong to various uh, tissue types. If they belong to the blood they are categorized as leukemia and there are various kinds of leukemias. So, you can have lymphocytes that have uh, lost their ability to undergo cell cycle regulation and there could be other kinds of like for example, B cells that have uh, lost their ability to be regulated the size cell cycle being regulated. There can be T cells that can uh, become uh, cancerous and there can be other kinds of uh, tumors that are arising. So, during this, this series of experiments investigators had isolated one of the one of the uh, ways by which they uh, try to grow these tumors is to isolate these various cells and grow them in the lab in tissue culture. And because uh, these tumors have lost their ability to undergo cell cycle regulation, uh, you can develop methods by which you can isolate these tumor cells. They will keep on constantly dividing in the lab and they will not die. And they will name them by various names like for example, carcinoma hepatoma which arises from a uh, from a liver cell and so on and so forth. So, these lymphocytes that had become cancerous and have had been isolated and had been named by various names these are all called as lymphomas. So, various kinds of lymphomas had been isolated and one of the experiments that demonstrated that uh, lymphocytes home into specifically into certain kinds of lymph nodes they did an experiment where they took a cross section of these lymph nodes. For example, uh, in the mesenteric lymph node or the cervical lymph node or various other uh, lymph nodes like uh, under the armpit like the axillary lymph, lymph node. And peculiar aspect or very interesting thing that they found was that when they took these cross sections 
and examined them by histology after layering them with these uh, lymphomas that they were growing in the lab, they found that those cells actually stick to the high endothelial cell venules in the cross section of the lymph node. So, in other words, if you were to uh, look at the cross section of the lymph node, which you saw in the earlier slide and you had the, the high endothelial cell venule having the endothelial cells. So, assuming that this, this is the cross section and you layered this cross section on top with these lymphomas that were that they had isolated or cultured over a long period of time, these lymphomas would stick to the place where these high endothelial cells were located. Now, this is basically because of molecular interaction. The lymphomas had certain cell surface molecules which interacted with some of the cell surface molecules that were expressed on the endothelial cells in this cross section. And one of the very interesting things that were found is that lymphomas that actually stuck to for example, in the axillary lymph node HEV or cross section would not stick to some other lymph node HEV which was ar arising from the cervical lymph node. So, in other words what this experiment demonstrated was that you had certain kinds of cells that would home into homing is the word that is used during trafficking because they home into certain lymph node they would home into axillary lymph node there were cells that could home into axillary lymph nodes, but those same cells would not stick to the high endothelial venule cross sections in the cervical lymph node. So, they had receptors or molecules that would interact with the high endothelial venule specifically of the axillary lymph node cross sections and not in the cervical lymph node. And yet others they, they demonstrated that they had the ability to, to stick to cross sections or high endothelial venule. Uh, cross sections in different kinds of lymph node. So, therefore, they found that in fact, these cells in the blood had actually the ability to look uh, to look into a kind of uh, uh, lo you are looking at a, at a certain kind of um, reaction or molecular interaction, where these cells are homing into one kind of lymph node and not into other kinds of lymph node. Now, you can imagine this scenario happening in for example, mucosal associated uh, lymphoid tissue. In the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue you as I as I mentioned in the previous classes are lined by uh, immunoglobulin IgA. So, therefore, you would like to have B cells that are secreting IgA in those locations and not for example, those IgA secreting B cells going into some other location where IgA will not play a major role. So, this is the concept of lymphoid or lymphocyte trafficking and uh, lymph, uh, lymphocyte homing. Now, how does this homing or lymphocyte or lymphoid trafficking occur? As I told you earlier, this is happening mainly because of cell cell interaction via these what molecules called as cell adhesion molecules. So, CAMs for short, these are also referred to as CAMs cell adhesion molecules. So, these cell adhesion molecules play a major role in lymphoid trafficking through the lymph node out of the lymph node into the heart as well as in other, um, other locations. So, you see the lymphoid circulation and the systemic circulation play a major role in mobilizing these so called armed forces that have the B, B lymphocyte and the T lymphocyte to a location where it is most needed to a location where inflammation is occurring to a location where bacterial infection or virus infection is occurring may be under the skin. So, what are these cell adhesion molecules? To look at cell adhesion molecules, they have categorized a variety of different families of these uh, cell adhesion molecules. These cell adhesion molecules consist of the following families they are called one of them one major class is called as the mucin like cell adhesion molecules. Now, you will come across the word called as adhesins because adhesins is a name given for those molecules that are expressed on the internal lumen or the surface of the vascular high endothelial venule cells 
address is something that you use to post a letter which should reach its location. Similarly, here the lymphocytes that are coming in they have to find their address and therefore, these were termed as addressing molecules. So, these mucin like cell addition molecules are actually a playing a role in making those rolling lymphocytes stick at that location. Now, the members of this uh, CAMS or mucin like CAMS also have what are called as glycam 1, CD 34, CD standing for cluster of differentiation and PSGL 1 and MADCAM 1. So, then you have other um, another family called as selectins. Selectins are of three types L selectin, P selectin and E selectin. Now, it so happens that these selectins always have an interaction with cell addition molecules because of the properties of the selectins themselves. So, if you want to look at these properties, let us see what happens in uh, what happens in, in this and you will see the properties of these mucin like camps as well as the cell addition molecule. So, these mucin like cell addition molecules have the property of being heavily glycosylated meaning that they have uh, carbohydrate groups. And one of these carbohydrates or many of these groups have the property of being adding sialic acid onto these groups or they are called as sialylated because they have sialic acid on them. So, these heavily glycosylated uh, moieties they are rich in serine and threonine because these are the amino acids that help or get glycosylated. So, you find that these are sialylated and these carbohydrate ligands are there and all these ligands or carbohydrates that are bound by proteins. These are bound by proteins that are called as lectins. Lectins are molecules that you can isolate for example, from mung bean or soya bean or peanut agglutinin. These are all uh, these are all molecules that have uh, the uh, proteins that have the ability to bind carbohydrate. So, these are also called as lectins. So, if you were to look at uh, these different uh, structures that are present or these family of addition molecules, you find that these sialylated carbohydrate ligands are bound by selectins. And why selectins? Because selectins have a distal lectin like domain which have the ability to bind sialylated groups on these mucin molecules and various kinds of uh, selectins are found and these are uh, some of them are called as L selectin and these are found uh, majorly on lymphocytes. Vascular endothelial cells on the other hand express what are called as E and P type selectins or P selectins. They are the they are the ones that mediate the stickiness of the circulating lymphocyte as I told you these lymphocytes are circulating within the capillary and when they start to stick these are the selectin molecules that mediate the interaction with these um, molecules that are or addressins that are expressed on the surface of endothelial cells. So, some of these actually these molecules are binding in pairs. We will try and see in the later lectures what are these pairs of molecules that bind to each other, cell addition molecules that bind to each other. For example, a molecule called as LFA1 or lymphocyte function associated molecule 1 always binds to what is called as VCAM1. So, here you find that L selectin which is expressed on leukocytes as an example binds to two mucin like molecules called as CD 34 and glycam 1 which is expressed on the surface of high endothelial cell venules. Now, all the expression of all these molecules can be modulated by various kinds of cytokines. In fact, these are the cytokines that are secreted when these cells are activated via these uh, interactions between these cell surface molecules which leads to G proteins transmembrane signaling as I mentioned earlier. So, you find another example like the mucin like PSGL 1 uh, molecule which is expressed on the surface of neutrophils bind to either E type or P type selectin which is present in the locations where there is inflamed or uh, inflammation which is occurring and those HEVs which are located in the inflamed location. So, now going back to this 
family of cell addition molecules. So, these are the two types uh, two families in addition to these two families you have what is called as the immunoglobulin super family of cell addition molecules. They are called as immunoglobulin super family of cell addition molecules, because they basically express the immunoglobulin domains, which is written and you will come to look, uh, learn about this later on, when you look at the, the structure of immunoglobulin molecules. So, uh, they have this domain, which is uh, linked by disulfide bridges. So, this is these molecules are called as the immunoglobulin uh, domain containing super family of molecules. So, you find that these so these super family contain members like ICAM 1, which is nothing but interstitial cell addition molecule. So, you have like ICAM 1, ICAM 2 and ICAM 3 different types and you have what you call as vascular cell addition molecule VCAM 1 and as I told you earlier lymphocyte function associated molecule it is also called as CDT, CD, CD 2 and you have what is called as LFA 3 which is now known as CD 58. So, in addition to this family you have what are called as integrin family of cell addition molecules to learn more about uh, there are different members of this integrin uh, family and these these uh, classification uh, of the integrins into various uh, sub uh, groups actually depends upon the expression of the subunits which is actually a heterodimer consisting of an alpha subunit or a beta subunit it's a um, uh, heteromeric protein. So, they, they can have different types of alpha subunit or different types of beta subunit and based upon this constitution, they are organized into different types of integrin molecules. For example, VLA 4, uh, uh, LPAM 1 and LPAM 2 and so on and so forth. So, if you, if you look at this a little more. So, you have uh, integrins which are heterodimeric and they play roles in adherence to vascular endothelial cells, especially uh, in lymph nodes and other types of cell cell interactions, which uh, I will describe a little in my next lecture. So, this is a very important type of interaction, even considering from the from the uh, observation that there is a disease called as leukocyte adhesion deficiency, uh, where you have a deficiency in leukocyte adhesion. So, these molecules uh, the cell cell interactions are deficient and uh, the, the type of beta subunit in this uh, heteromeric proteins play a role in the classification to various subgroups. Now, you have the immunoglobulin super family as I told you in the last slide, these have variable number of immunoglobulin domains and these are expressed on vascular endothelial cells and they bind to integrins. So, therefore, integrins have the ability to bind these immunoglobulin domains. So, these are a kind of a pair they, they interact with each other and of course, there are important modi, mo, molecules such as MADCAM 1, which is a member of the immunoglobulin super family as well as the mucin la, la super family, because they express both type of domains. So, the expression of the mucosal, mucosal endothelia regulates lymphocyte trafficking into mucosa, into the mucosal lining or uh, into the lumen of various kinds of uh, uh, lymph nodes and the binding to immunoglobulin domains through the integrin domains uh, actually characterize one type of interaction, while the selectin binding through the mucin like domains characterize another type of interaction that occurs with this particular molecule, which has both mucin like as well as the immunoglobulin uh, domains. So, therefore, going back to the cell addition molecules to summarize, there are four different families of these cell addition molecules, which I have just now described and these are the molecules that take part in pair wise interaction with uh, counterparts that are expressed on the vascular endothelial cells as well as the lymphocytes that need to traffic particularly or specifically into specific lymph nodes. So, going on further uh, we have covered now the structure and the, and the roles of uh, secondary lymphoid organs like the various type of lymph node. Now, you also have secondary lymphoid organs such as the spleen. 
Now, the spleen is a more organized and uh, differentiated kind of a lymph node, but most of the functions are the same. The spleen also takes uh, plays a major role in RBC destruction. So, therefore, if you look at the uh, section of the lymph node, you see that there is uh, a red cell area or a red cell pulp and a white cell pulp. Now, the red cell pulp is beneath the capsule which consists of a lot of uh, RBCs which are coming into into the spleen for destruction and beneath that you have the uh, you have you have the white uh, white pulp which is basically uh, the difference between the lymph node and uh, the spleen is that you have uh, a, a, a variety of structures called as peri arteriolar uh, lymphoid sheets which is nothing but you have you have blood vessels that are going into the spleen and these blood vessels are lined on the side by the b cells as well as p cells majorly but you have other types of cells so if you were to look at a cross section of this uh, arteriole you find all these cells aggregating just outside of of that lumen of the arteriole this is called as peri arteriolar lymphoid sheath peri arteriolar lymphoid sheath because these B cells are aggregating or surrounding this arteriole. This is basically again to meet the antigen that might be coming out of these cells and beyond this peri arteriolar sheath you have the organization of the various primary and secondary lymphoid, lymphoid follicles in order to further the uh, activation of the B cells and the secretion of the B cells. Now, going on to other kinds of lymph node, for example, I told you one of the major, uh, major lymph node uh, lymphoid structures that are associated with the secondary lymphoid organs is the malt or the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. Uh, mucosal associated lymphoid tissue is very different from the organization of, a of, of an ideal lymph node. For this is the organization that I show you, show you of the uh, lymph node of the of the Peyer's patch, for example, which I said was found within the intestine. As you all know, the the, the intestine or the digestive uh, system, uh, the alimentary canal, is exposed to a variety of uh, pathogens and bacteria that we take in while we ingest our food. Now the malt associated or the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue is very much different in its organization. And I show you here this is the intestinal mucosal membrane lining. So, these are the villi. So, you have the villi in the intestine for increasing the absorptive surfaces uh, surface of nutrients which is uh, very much familiar to everybody. So, these villi are, are lined by the cilia that are there to, to help in the motion in the in the movement or way of various uh, nutrient or uh, granular particles associated with the ingested food. Now, you find that along these kind of mucosal lining you have the cells that are associated with, with malt which are basically called as M cells. These are specialized kind of cells which are basically found in the lumen of these villi which I which I have uh, showed over here which I will show you in more in, in more detail in the next uh, uh, slide. Basically these are the places where antigen or for that matter bacterial or viral antigens come in contact with the immune system represented by the Peyer's patches or a secondary lymph node. Now what happens here? These are the lymph node under which you have a loosely organized association or conglomeration of uh, these lymphocytes consisting of B cells. So, essentially this is a follicle. So, you have a kind of a loose germinal center uh, of, of these B cells consisting of antigen presenting cells and some T cells just under this what is called as an inductive, inductive site which contains these M cells. Now, the M cells as I told you are specialized cells which take in the antigen in a specialized way and into these uh, and then get them or expose them to these lymphoid or loosely organized lymphoid uh, conglomeration, conglomerations or associations which are found in the lamina propria just underneath these mucosal membrane lining. 
beneath the lamina propria you have a much more organized structure of lymph node containing the primary follicle and the secondary follicle which actually make up the organization of the payer's patch which is found in this layer which is called as the sub mucosa under which there is of course, muscle that lines your intestine. So, in order to see the nature of the M cells we will go into the, into the next slide which is basically um, uh, showing you the structure of an M cell. Now, what you are seeing here is this particular area which is consisting of the other villous cells and an M cell associated uh, along with these various kind of mucosal villous cells. Sorry. Now, if you look at this M cell, you find that this M cell structure in contrast to containing various all these villous structures that contain all the cilia, they are made up mostly of vesicular structures. So, these are the vesicles into which the antigen is taken up. Once it is taken up, this antigen is internalized into vesicular structures. So, basically a process uh, of uh, similar to endocytosis and once it is taken up, this particular antigen that is taken up into these vesicles is actually released into a pocket that is existent within the M cell. So, you have this M cell between the M cell and the neighboring mucosal epithelial cell, you have a kind of a structure or a space which is a pocket. Now, uh, it is very interesting that this pocket. So, you see you have something like a, a cell which is actually uh, kind of a, a bigger go down which is consisting of smaller little cells which has an association a sprinkling of macrophages which is needed to uh, break this antigen and present this antigen. And then you have the helper T cells and then you have of course, the B cells. So, therefore, you have these three major players which are now responding to the antigen that is taken up by this M cell from the lumen of the intestine. So, this M cell plays a major role in buffeting some of the some of the harmful effects of this antigen on the lymphoid cells which are the B cells and the T cells. So, there is some sort of a treatment within the M cell which then comes out into this pocket and this pocket in this pocket these various kinds of lymphoid cells meet the antigen and the antigen presentation take place by uptake into this macrophage and then the antigen is presented. Now, as I told you in the previous transparency beneath this particular inductive site you have a conglomeration of different kind like the B lymphocytes. So, if you were to look at that organized lymphoid fo follicle over here, these B cells are actually coming over here and then getting activated. They activate um, uh, more T cells in this area, and more macrophages are found over here like the uh, follicular dendritic cells. These then activate the B cells to become plasma cells and one of the major function of this plasma cells especially in this location is to uh, secrete. IgA molecules. So, these are the secretory IgA molecules which actually line the mucosal lining of the intestine. So, these this IgA that is secreted by these plasma uh, plasma cells actually get uh, come out and then get start to line up the lining of the intestine and act as a barrier for the incoming uh, pathogens. So, in this class now to summarize we have gone through the structure of the uh, secondary lymphoid uh, tissue such as the lymph node and uh, the malt or the mucosal associated uh, lymphoid tissue which is uh, which has a different type of organization in that it contains the it, it contains the M cell. And then of course, you have other uh, kinds of uh, lymphoid tissue like uh, lymphoid tissue that is uh, operational or associated with the skin like the cutaneous associated lymphoid tissue which has got keratinocytes and of course, uh, other kinds of lymphocytes called as the 
um, uh, something similar to what are called as the intra epithelial lymphocytes. Now, the IEL is actually a very important type of cell which I forgot to mention earlier. These IELs are lymphocytes that are actually going between these various kinds of cells. Now, the IELs are very important because they have a different type of reaction. They have uh, what are called as different uh, uh, like the gamma delta T cells which recognize a class of antigens very different from the major type of T cell which has got the alpha beta T cell receptor. We will come to that more when we cover the T cell receptor and see how these different kinds of uh, T cells react with different kinds of antigens. So, just like the IELs or the intra epithelial uh, lymphocyte, you have similar such lymphocytes under the skin and basically antigen presentation occurs under the skin uh, via the uh, follicular or the dendritic cells and then the same sort of um, uh, response is completed. So, I will complete this lecture by uh, summarizing again that we looked at the various kinds of lymph node and we looked at various kinds of molecules that take part in homing of these lymphocytes to various kinds of uh, lymph nodes. So, therefore, the participation of the cell addition molecules and the uh, homing via the addressin molecules and how these molecules actually take part in cell cell interaction when T cells are interacting with each other and how T cells during the activation of T cells the same sort of cell addition molecules take part and how these take part we will come to in a later class where we look at T cell receptor and how the T cell receptor is activated.